When you take a seat to start your practice by the word the way the word asana actually means to take your seat. And it's recommended that this seat is steady enough and comfortable enough that you can go into your yoga. So you make your physical seat stable enough, stiram, but also easeful enough, sukham, so that you can experience yoga. In the text that that particular short phrase comes from, which is the Yoga Sutras, yoga is defined as the experience of the mind settling down from its fluctuations and then becoming more reflective. So may this happen for us today in our yoga practice. You may start breathing in and breathing out, kind of notifying your body and your brain that here you are for your yoga practice. And if you reflect on what has brought you to yoga class today, my hunch is that whatever has compelled you to be here, we could consider it sacred because it motivated you to be here. Like for example, a longing to connect or a desire to be suffering a little bit less or a commitment to nourishing your vitality or the willingness to have yoga transform your life and your mind. And even if you came wanting just to have a, a better like yoga abs or something you saw advertised, <laughs> not my advertising, but if you saw that and that's what brought you, let's consider it sacred because it, it welcomes you to a tradition that has a sacred quality to it. So as you breathe in and breathe out, let whatever called you to class today, let that be something sacred in your attention and your awareness. And then please bring your hands together at your heart. When we sing asatoma satkamaya, may we know that which is true, distinct from that which is untrue. Tamasoma jyotirgamaya, may we know the difference between that which causes us to go to darkness and that which motivates us to go to luminosity. Mrityoma amritam gamaya, may we know the difference between that which is finite, that which is fleeting, and that which is infinite that which is abiding. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Asatoma Sarkamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sarkamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 
Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om With your exhale you may bow your head to your heart and release your hands Please open your eyes. I'm going to scoot back a little from my computer. So we are going to start this morning by opening up the upper back, neck, and shoulders. So something that I'm going to want you to be able to do is to have your hands go behind. And this is actually like an upside down prayer position like that, when the hands go behind like this. Okay. And so we're going to be taking the arms up. We'll take them wide. And in that position, you're going to have the hands clasped like this and the pinky side of the hand goes at the base of the skull and that's going to give you the chance to lift up and then you'll also have this prayer position and the upside down prayer position so please clasp your hands and then inhale just to go up first now exhale pull your hands wide and slide the pinkies down to the base of your skull then inhale lean back press your head back Now exhale, push the heels of your hands up. And inhale to open. Turn your palms face up. Inhale to go up to prayer position. And then turn the prayer position upside down. Go behind your head. And inhale to press back and gaze up. And exhale, float the arms up and out and return to your starting position. Okay, repeating that. So inhale, hands clasped, going up. Exhale, pull the elbows wide, slide your hands down. Inhale, press your head back, look up, lift your chest and heart. Now exhale, push up. Inhale, press out. Turn your palms face up. Inhale, big circle. And then make the upside down namaste. And inhale, press your head gently back into your wrists. And exhale, release your arms. Let them float down. We are going to do that again in just a moment. So try to sense that the movements and the gestures and the breath, this is a chance for you to commune, like to connect with yourself, but also to have a sense of connection with each other and to bring in the larger community that your heart is caring for, is aware of. So clasping the hands. I'm going to inhale. Good, exhale. Now inhale to go up. Exhale, push up. Inhale, open. Okay, releasing. Turn your palms face up. Inhale to go up. And then palms backwards and upside down. And inhale to go up. And exhale to release. Notice even any bit of warmth that that brings into your upper back and any change for your mind your perspective, inner or outer. We're going to come up to standing, and you will need a yoga strap and two blocks for class today. Um, so when you come up, let me just put my physio ball aside. I'll change cameras. When you come up to stand, go ahead and come up to mountain pose.
There's some changes in the Zoom platform I want to navigate to make that better. There we go. Okay, so you need your yoga strap and mountain pose. And I'm going to ask you to put a loop in the strap so that the strap lets your hands be shoulder width apart. Now the strap and the shoulder width apart, you're also going to have the arms at some point go behind the head. And what you'll do there is you'll have the strap caught by your wrists like that so that you can widen the elbows apart. Okay, so take this forward, palms facing each other. And then inhale through the nose, go up. Now exhale, slide that down and put the strap but not the buckle at the base of your skull. Inhale, gaze up, elbows wide. Now exhale, push up to reach up. Inhale deeply. And exhale, sit down to chair pose. Okay, inhale, rise up, lift up, root down through your heels. Exhale, pull the elbows wide, hold the sides of the strap. And then inhale, lean back, look up. Okay, exhale, reach up. Inhale to go up while rooting down. And then exhale, bend your knees, chair pose. Inhale, rise up last time. Hold the strap in one hand, exhale, sweep your arms wide. And when your arms come down now to kind of dangle, just take notice the warmth of the upper back, your shoulders, the effort that you were just making. And then take just the strappy part, not the loop, but the strap and take this forward, about shoulder width to start, and then raising your arms up. Slide your hands apart on the strap and bring it down to a comfortable width for your hands and arms. Imagine you're holding a giant rubber band and you're pulling the rubber band wide. So your arms will be behind you, something like this. And they can be just about shoulder height, maybe a tiny bit up or a tiny bit down from there. And as you breathe in again, imagine it's a giant rubber band. Stretch your arms back, lift your heart up. One more inhale, please. And then when you exhale, loosen your hands on the strap. And this time as your arms come down, you could ask yourself, what can I surrender? Can I surrender? And let there be just a spontaneous response from your mind or your body or your life. What can you surrender? Now again, with the strap and the loop. So if you have this loop and you place it so your right hand is in the loop like this, so that on the side view looks like that. So my thumb is not compromised there. You take this overhead. Reach back with your left hand to hold the strap. You can pull back with the left hand to give yourself something to push up against. And it's the right arm that's more important. So the left hand is only pulling back to give you the chance to make the right arm stronger. Take a deep breath in. And then make a little side bend to your left. Keeping your right arm steady and your right foot grounded. Try breathing in to the right hemisphere of your body. If it's comfortable for you to do it, you can turn your gaze to look up like we often do in yoga poses. And sometimes gazing up helps to produce some optimism or alertness. It is also appropriate to gaze down if that's what your mind and body are asking for. And that can be more grounding Whatever choice you made, please take one more inhale to the right side of your torso. And then use your right low belly. So you're going to exhale, rise up, and then inhale, open your right arm, turn your nose to your left. 
And exhale, lower your right arm, center your head. Consider the word surrender, which is also necessary for the word communion. To commune with one thing or many things, we have to surrender something else. So to commune with nature, we surrender for a time the computer. To commune with each other, we surrender something of our self-interest and become other-interested. Place your left hand in your strap, bring it forward and up. Hold it back there with your right hand to give it some pressure, some tension. Reach up with your left arm, and then as you side bend to your right, please press into your left heel for full stability. The hips don't have to shift sideways. So your side bend is really in your torso, not from your hips. And you can choose to gaze up or to gaze down, but please keep the breath smooth and let that help you to know if when you gaze down your breathing becomes more rich or full, that may be what your body needs for your head position. If you're able to maintain that kind of breath while you're gazing up, then you can choose that. Now we're going to use an exhale breath to come upright. So that's your left low belly, exhale. And then inhale, open your left arm, turn your nose to the right. And exhale, lower this one down, bring your head to center. And you can just reflect once more on the word surrender, which is a huge word actually. Don't misinterpret it, please. Surrender is not the same as apathy. And communion means to really be with, to be with, to be unified. Now we can set this aside. And please place your two blocks in preparation for Surya Namaskar, the sun salutation. Surya Namaskar. Bring your hands together. So Surya Namaskar is, it's a little prayer, really, um, to nature, a prayer to energy, vitality, prana. Let's use it this afternoon in our practice as a way to pray for that which is needing our attention. Not just the people, but also the ecology, all the species, the plants, the animals, the earth itself. So energize your legs, root into your toes, your heels. And with your ujjayi inhale, sweep the hands down, turn your palms up, and raise up. Now exhale, ujjayi breath to come forward and down. Inhale, glide forward through your heart. And exhale for a deep bow towards your legs. Really taking your time, but make the rhythm between inhale and exhale relatively equal. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, left toes back. Inhale to rise, crescent lunge. Exhale, pull your elbows down, gaze forward. Inhale, raise up, gaze up. Exhale, elbows down, gaze forward, squeeze the upper back a little bit. Inhale, reach up. Again, squeeze the upper back, the back of your heart. Exhale thoughtfully. Use the strength of the low belly. One more time. Inhale to reach up, look up. And then exhale, arms wide. Come smoothly forward. Touch both blocks. And inhale, left foot forward, heart forward. And bow deeply towards your legs.
Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, right foot back, keeping the rhythm of your breathing consistent. It's going to build your stamina, your clarity. Inhale to rise. You'll build your endurance, your concentration. So exhale, elbows down, gaze forward. We inhale to go up. Free up your shoulder blades as you raise your arms. Exhale, elbows down, gaze forward. Again, inhale to reach. Exhale, elbows down, gaze forward. Squeeze the upper back a little bit. Last one, inhale to rise. And then exhale, arms wide, come forward slowly. And let's use the blocks to step backwards, please. Downward facing dog pose. We're keeping the breath smooth and steady. This is gonna increase your stamina, your concentration. You'll have greater endurance. And notice the inhale length and your exhale length and do your best to match those to each other. When you next exhale, step your right foot forward and then your left foot forward and complete the exhale in Uttanasana. Then inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. And exhale, hands to your heart. Now again, we're gonna change an arm position here, but let's inhale to go up, Ordva Hastasana. Okay, exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, glide forward. When you exhale, take the left toes back, establish your foundation. And then inhale to rise. Basic lunge becomes crescent lunge. And here on the exhale, sweep your arms wide and forward and wrap your left elbow over your right. This is the top half of Eagle Pose. Now on the inhale, raise your elbows and your heart and your gaze. And exhale, level that off so the torso becomes more upright. Tone your low belly. I realize you can't see much past your hands. Try it again. Inhale to go up. Raise your elbows, lift your heart and your gaze. And then exhale, squeeze the elbows towards your sternum. Make your heart upright. Okay, twice more. Inhale, go up, keep the breath smooth. Exhale, level. One more time. And then exhale, level it off. Now here we go. Inhale like you're a bird taking flight. And exhale, arms wide, like you're just soaring in the air, as a bird could do. Touch the two blocks, please, and step backwards to downward dog pose. Take a deep breath. And when you exhale, step your left foot forward between your hands. That's your basic lunge. Use your inhale to rise, crescent lunge. And now wrap your right arm over your left arm. So this is temporarily compressive. We're going to inhale, raise the elbows, make a little back bend in your upper back, the upper, upper back. And exhale, level that off, tone your low belly. Inhale, raise your elbows and your heart, keep your legs stable. And exhale to level that off. So we keep the legs stable because I want this back bend to be in your heart, not really in your lower back so much. So again, inhale to go up. Exhale to be level. And here we go, taking flight. Inhale, sweep your arms wide. And exhale, like you're soaring on the air. Okay, please step your right foot forward, heart forward. And exhale to deeply bow over your legs. 
Inhale, rise up. And then hands to your heart. Anjali Mudra. And you can ask again, what is the word surrender? Invite for you just now. What can you surrender? And how does that allow for that sense of communion that we come together to practice, but this practice is also for us to commune with life or grace or nature with each other, to commune with something more deeply true. You can release both hands, and we're going to use the two blocks to support your shoulders and your upper back. So for those who prefer it, you probably want padding for your knees. I have a double yoga mat here, so I won't reach for a blanket right now. But we're going to stack the two blocks, and you'll be putting one elbow, the back of the elbow will go on the blocks, and then I'll start an opening through the side and the shoulder. So if I do this as a profile, like so, what you're going to see from one side of the profile is how you place the back of the elbow here and you put your hand on the same side as the shoulder. The right hand can be on the floor where you need it for support. And as you reach back with your hips, try to get a sense of the left hand, if that's the one you put on the block, left hand touching its own shoulder blade. And then broaden into the back of your waist. Think about a little bit like cat pose for your lumbar spine. Less like a hammock towards the floor. Enjoy a deep breath. And then press into your right hand for stability. Step the left hand down. You can scooch your blocks to the other side. I'll show you the forward view this time. So you're going to place your elbow in the center of the blocks. Use the opposite hand on the floor for support. Then you can relax back so that there's a sense not of collapsing in your lumbar spine, but actually of broadening. And focusing instead on opening the right upper quadrant of your chest, your right shoulder. Try to breathe in in such a way as it's your body is aware that you care for it. No sense of rushing the pace. No sense of disappointment to have one sensation or another. It's an overall commitment to having attention, concentration, curiosity. And then pressing into your left hand for support, release your right hand and take one block now to sit on. We call this Vajrasana, so you sit on the block like a little bit of a bench, like this. And as you let your hands rest in your lap, you can ask again, okay, what is the word surrender inspiring? Where in your own life, if you had to surrender something, what might that be? Surrender in the sense that when a wave surrenders back to the ocean, it becomes part of the larger experience. Surrender is not the synonym for the word apathy or resignation. Surrender is not defeat. In this case, in yoga, surrender is a quality of rejoining with or reconnecting with a larger whole, or connecting with your values or your wisdom. Okay, now we're going to 
do something a little bit tricky because we're not in person, so I can't see you all really directly. You're going to take the yoga strap, and I would like this to be able to go on your elbows, but not to hit you in the head. So when the strap is like so, then I also want you to hold the block between the hands like this. Okay, and again, I do not want this to hit you in the head. So if you put this strap above your elbows, like I was just doing there, and let's say you put the buckle, let me say, let me say what not to do. So you put the strap above your elbows and you put the buckle right where your forehead's going to be so you can hit yourself in the face. Please do not do that. So once you know the width of the strap, and mine's a little bit too small, so I'm going to change it, then you put it around your forearms and you make sure that the buckle is not near your head. Okay, so in my case, the buckle is on the outside of where the strap's going to be. Okay, and then you take the block in your hands like this. Looks like that, okay? Bend the elbows. So you've got this little viewing screen right there to look at me through. I have a viewing screen to see you through. And then when you inhale, raise your elbows up. And notice when your body starts to have a difficult time moving the arms, what do you do? Okay, so that's an interesting question because a lot of you then exhale to come down. What happens in the human body, so not, not like a lot of you because you're flawed in some way, but what happens is we hit a place where we can't keep moving, and some other part of the body gives up, gives in, compensates. So the most common giving up in this one is the arms come up and people compromise the lower back. Okay, so we're going to start here now with the elbows in front. Draw your lower belly in. And think about broadening your lower back and not giving it up. And then take the arms overhead. So it should feel like you have a little bit of what we'll be calling yoga, a little bit of restraint. You have restrained the lumbar spine from compensating. And then you get more honesty in yoga, we call that satya, more honesty about your actual capacity. Lower your elbows down slowly. The word for restraint is actually, you can use the word yama, means restraint, or you can use the word tapas, means discipline. Let's try it again. Inhale to go up, so without compromising your lower back. And then exhale to come down. We'll do it one more time. Okay, so keeping the low belly and the pelvis toned, please go up. And exhale to come down. Okay, now take your arms out of the strap and when the arms relax, let's see what does the word surrender feel like from here. And if your arms and your torso are the right length, your hands can dangle without reaching the floor. And now we're going to take that to the floor and <laughs> so I'm laughing because I'm thinking of you tomorrow having the sensations of today's yoga practice and I want you to feel like so uh, loving and appreciative, <laughs> your teacher and yourself. So the strap goes like this on your forearms. Again, you don't need to have this be hitting you in the face. You have your block between your hands and now we take it up to the pose called dolphin pose which is like doing downward dog, except that you're on your elbows. This is your dolphin pose. I don't know when it became the name dolphin, and I've never seen a dolphin doing this position. So in dolphin pose, you do want to press your elbows down against the floor and raise your hips up to the ceiling. If you have shorter hamstrings, it's totally fine to bend your knees so your hamstrings are not limiting the freedom your hips can have. And then that would also limit the strength your arms can express. So a little bend to the knees is not considered compensating. It's just considered what might be necessary for some of us with our hamstrings. And now as you next inhale, then come forward so your shoulders are over your elbows. Touch your knees down, and please try this. When you walk your knees back a little bit, and when you tip 
back towards table pose. Raise your block up. Turn your palms to face towards your head. Keep the elbows in the strap. And see if you might be able to bring your block even back over the base of your skull. Your knees can be back quite a bit from your elbows, so you're not going to child's pose here. And then please come forward to touch your block back down. Walk your knees in so you're more stable. Release your elbows from your strap and come upright and let the arms relax again. And maybe they won't touch the ground if the arms are short enough, like mine, they don't reach. Just consider, okay, what is being surrendered now? I'm going to show you that same movement from the side view, just in case anybody got confused. Okay, so, I wish the mat could be like a lazy Susan and you would just see it turning around, but I don't have that kind of technology. So, the block is here. The strap is designed not to hit you in the head, so again, you're not going to take your forehead out during yoga. And dolphin pose looks like this. So like downward dog pose, but on the elbows. And then when we came down, and you're going to walk your knees back because when you tip the elbows up, I don't want you to go to child's pose. I want you to have kind of more like a puppy dog pose right there. Okay, let's try it one more time. I'll go to my front facing block now. <laughs> so you've got your strap around your forearms, your palms around your block. Lift your hips. As you send the hips back, press firmly down with your elbows. Again, it's totally fine to bend your knees. It might not be in your genetics that your hamstrings <clears throat> want you to do dolphin pose. So you bend the knees. Make yourself an option that feels like you can be strong. As you press down into your elbows, raise your hips and spine. Good. And then let's touch the knees down lightly. You can bring your shoulders forward over your elbows. Walk the knees a tiny bit back so that when you tip back into that prayer tip kind of position, you really feel there's an opening from the elbow through the side of the shoulder blade into your rib cage. And breathing in, and breathing out. And then shift your body weight a little bit forward so you can scooch the knees up. Release your arms from your strap. Put the block aside. Okay, nice job. So all of that in the upper back, in the spirit of surrender and communion, we are addressing the heart center, the upper chest, and the center we call in yoga Vyana Vayu. I'd like you to reach for a blanket now. And take your blanket and open it lengthwise. And roll it length to length. And place your blanket down horizontally on your mat. You can lie on your back so that this blanket is right behind your heart. So your shoulders may or may not reach the floor, and that's okay. There you go. So if the blanket roll is right behind the heart, your sternum is going to be the high point here. For those of you for whom the shoulders might be limited in flexibility, Take your arms straight out in a T-shape. For those of you for whom laying the arm back flat like this is an option, we call this cactus pose. Go ahead and put the arms in cactus pose then. And please close your eyes if that's comfortable to do. And 
let your mind start to go inward for the question about surrender and communion it does include your body your thoughts your actions the source of the response really wants to come from the heart What is being asked of you? You may not have a predetermined response to either of these questions. It's best not to have a sense that you already know. Now with the upper back and heart on the blankets, with your knees bent, tip both knees down to your left, and that's gonna make a little spine twist. It's also gonna potentially challenge your right shoulder, so roll it back, and think of this as a back bend through the inner body. Lengthen through your right knee like a telescope. Turn your head to the right. And then roll your hips back to center, your nose back to center, and your knees. And then both knees down to your right. Let the left hip reach out towards the left knee like a telescope. Roll your left shoulder down towards the floor and turn your head to your left. to roll your hips back to center, your nose and your knees back to center. And please roll to your side. Set up your blanket to go lengthwise. You can sit in front of your blanket, but not on it, please. As you lay back, reach for one of your blocks. You can place the block under the blanket under your head. So that comes up to the base of your skull. If you like, you can either use an eye pillow or you can cover up, for example, if you have your shawl with you, you can cover the eyes. optional, of course. You also can cover with a blanket. When you cover, then if you choose to do so, let yourself get very still. Let's do tuck the shoulders under, but then rest your hands on your abdomen. So we have raised your head in this position, and I've done this on purpose. It sets up your upper back, neck, and shoulders for what we call in yoga, Jalandhara Bandha. It's not an active expression of it, but it's a positional um, replication of it. So you can have your gaze downward, inward, towards your heart. For right now, the throat relaxed and inward. Invite your collarbones and your shoulders 
to melt down towards the floor. From the base of the throat, there at what's called the sternoclavicular notch, where the clavicles meet the sternum. Start from there to relax slowly out towards your right shoulder and slowly out towards your left shoulder. And that relaxation of the collarbones. Imagine each shoulder getting a little bit heavier, even though they're not touching the ground. And bring your awareness to the first rib underneath your collarbones. And imagine from the sternum out through these ribs, right side, left side, a quality of ease or melting. And coming down to the second rib, you can just imagine like an incremental distance down to the heart from the sternum across the upper collarbones, first rib, second rib. And then down to the third rib, the next layer in the rib cage. Invite there to be a quality of ease, a melting quality from your sternum out to the right and left. And then down to the fourth rib. And again, a sense of ease melting outwards from the center. In that melting, allow for your shoulders and your upper arms to get heavier with relaxation. down to the fifth rib, so further down the rib cage from your collarbones to the fifth rib. Imagine the deep ease. And keeping your mind at rest, come down to the next rib in the rib cage, left side, right side.
and allow that to come down to the next. So you're soon near to the bottom of the sternum. And allow that melting to go out right side, left side, inside. Allow your shoulders and your upper arms to get heavier with relaxation. Now just where the floating ribs begin, start softening there and imagine this softening will get to include your diaphragm, the solar plexus. And you can ask of the heart and the solar plexus and your deepest wisdom what needs to be surrendered what is asking for you in the practice of surrender? It's on behalf of how you can commune. And maybe you're surrendering a, a thought habit that you get seduced into where you judge others. Then you cannot commune, by the way, when judgment comes in. Or maybe you surrender a thought habit of your own lack of ability for something. And you're kind of standing outside yourself with that thought habit. The inner critic takes over, but you aren't able to stay in your capacity or your competency. Maybe the surrender is an action item. You could surrender running the water when you're brushing your teeth and you don't have to have the water on. Or one less episode on Netflix. And perhaps we practice, we all practice surrendering the need to know while we're facing uncertainty. And see how your solar plexus and your heart respond. And lightly wiggle your toes and your fingers in your own timing. You can then bend one knee at a time. And roll yourself to your side and then back up to sitting. Come up to sit and rest your hands for a moment in your lap and just ask again. We do palms face up, asking, okay, what am I going to practice surrender with? What's being asked of me in the spirit of surrender? The word for this is 
Ishvari Pranidana. You can join the hands together at your heart, which is like a gesture of communion, of a coming together. May the choices that we make or the inspiration that comes that we follow through on, may it help us to be wise stewards of our ecology, of our communities, our families, and ourselves. May we find ourselves capable of making decisions that benefit the species on the planet everywhere. Loka Samasta Sukino. I have to get my seat to sit on because I don't levitate. I didn't learn about levitation in my teacher training. Maybe our teachers thought it was too dangerous. How are you doing? Well, I am. Good, good. Go ahead. 